Okay, so today I'm going to be going through the steps to swap an HP 2920 out of a stack, um, reconfiguring it and putting a new one in. HP's warranty is 100 years, and we had uh, four ports go out on our primary, uh, the commander of our middle school stack, and this is the process to replace that device. So first, I wanted to go over the software that I'm going to be using. I'm using SolarWinds TFTP server. We use SolarWinds for other things. So when I needed a TFTP server, that's what I'll be using for that. I'll also be using PuTTY to uh, SSH into the switch and switches that I'll be working on. So um, I downloaded and installed PuTTY as well. And finally, I'll be using an open source piece of software called TerraTerm to do my terminal connection into the switches using a serial to um, Cat5 cable that came with the HP switches. So the first thing I would recommend backing up your existing configuration. You can do this a couple of different ways. I'm going to show you how to use it doing the uh, using the FTP or TFTP server and PuTTY uh, because you're going to be able to need that technique later on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to back up our um, existing configuration uh, before we get uh, moving on. So I've got uh, SolarWinds TFTP server started. Uh, it makes a folder on your C drive called TFTP root, which is where it's going to do every or save everything to, and it's where um, I'm going to want to put things that I want to um, upload as well because that's going to be something we do as well. So I'm going to accept that I'm putting in here to my switch. And uh, if it's got any of the current versions, manager is the logon. You can also make other accounts. So once I've logged in, and this is in that guide I just showed you a second ago, and I brought the guide there on there so you can see what I'm talking about. Once I'm on my stack, I'm going to do the first thing, which is just type config, and then I'm going to back up that uh, file. So I'm going to say copy startup config, which we're going to use again later um, using TFTP. IP address. This is the IP address of the machine you're currently on and end it with the name of the file you want it, uh, your configuration to be saved out as. If uh, it works, it should download right there in that FTP folder. And now this is the config file. Now I've got to replace my top level switch. So now I've got a backup of it that I'm going to reload because it's not going to have any of those settings once I get everything else set up. Now the next thing we need to do is check the firmware version of the machine that we're going or the of the switch that we're going to put into the stack to make sure it's the same version as the other one. If they're not the same version, uh, you're going to waste a couple hours like I initially did before I made this video. Uh, so that's the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to use TerraTerm to do that. So when you use um, TerraTerm, you're going to pick that you're using your serial connection, and it will just connect up, and, and you'll get to see the entire boot processing when you're doing that. And I'm going to pause it right here to show you that it shows right up top on the boots. It's software revision WB16020012. That's all I needed to look at first because what I'm going to do is I'm going to check my other switches next and make them match whatever the most upgraded version is. So I've switched over to my switch and if I go and I look on there, I can see it. Um, the easiest place is to go under system and upgrades and downloads and I can see that I'm on WB15120015. That's It lets you load a primary and a secondary image and when you try to do one, just do the primary so you can fall back to the secondary if you need to. Um, but that's how easy it is. Now, they're not going to stack if they're not the same. So I'm going to bring 15.12.005 up to the same place as the, um, as the new switch. 
So you can just go to the HP site and type in 2920 and do a search to find um, your switch. And there's mine, the 2920-24G. When I hit next, the arrow here, I get all the releases. And I had to go down to the previous releases to find um, 1602. Oh no, here we go, WB1602, and I need the 0212. So I wanted to go to this one. So I went to download this one, and when I went to download it said, hey, you shouldn't go straight here, you should upgrade. The pass should be to 1517 first. So I down downloaded this one, and then I also had to go back all the way down to the 15... Um, 17 right here and I did that one as well this final version of 15 right here I did this one so I up, I jumped to here and so I had to do two upgrades uh, to do that so at this point I've already backed it up I've terminaled in to find the version I've gone to the uh, stacks to find out what I need to upgrade and then I'm just going to do this next step that says copy TFTP flash uh, primary um, right off of um, putty using the FTP again. So I've saved that 1517 right here into the FTP root directory. And then I'm just going to use this um, command that I've got listed down here for you. Copy TFTP flash. This is the IP address of your machine. This is actually the final version. You put the name uh, that's right here in there. And then I did primary. I am not going to do, I'm going to tell you, don't do the secondary at all until you're completely done because you can always fall back to the secondary if you don't wipe them both. So I did that one. It took about five minutes for it to get all the way done. And then I had a problem. Uh, and the problem that I had was that it wiped out uh, my manager password. And in order for me to fix it, I had to go and use the clear button on the front of all of the switches on my stack and then I remoted in again um, using uh, the terminal and when I got in there let me go to the setup and change the password back to what my uh, password is to get in because it kept saying wrong password. Finally, I got back in, and then I did it with the version 16.02. And uh, after that, I've got it all up to um, the same version. And at that point, I removed the, um, the bad switch by going into config and saying stacking member, it was number one in my stack, remove. Then I powered it down, moved my stacking module. Actually, I had a 10 gig um, fiber module at the back that I had to move as well. I put those all in the new stacking module. And then on the stack, before I put it in, I added the um, new member to the stack by using the stacking member one, because it's gonna be number one. Type is the J9726A. Uh, then you put Mac and the Mac address of the switch, which I also found by being terminaled in uh, to that switch. And what that does is it puts it on the stack list. So then the next step is really, really, really easy. The, the stack I had of three was all ready to accept the new uh, 9726A. So then this time I've got the stacking module in it. I've got all my stuff set up. I've got it connected and stacked. And then I powered it on and held the reset button in so that it would actually do a full reset and go back to the um, default settings, which is if there's a stacking module, turn it on. Because right now, if you power it on without a stacking module, it disables stacking. By, by doing the reset, it re-enabled the stacking. And it all just came right back up together like I wanted it to. As soon as that was there, I could just take, I basically downloaded my config file again, edited that config file to have all the port matching that I had on the other one, and then was able to restore the new config file to my new stack 
and everything was perfect. I use Notepad++ to be able to see them side by side and I just took the uh, the downloaded version that I just did from the stack when I got it back up and I took the one that I did for my previous config and I just add those VLAN mappings over from the original one to the new one um, and just made sure all those uh, tagged and untagged ports were exactly the way I wanted them to be. And then once uh, I was done, I upload that new config using the, the commands that are lifted, listed in the text document and you're done. It does a reboot and everything worked perfectly and uh, my new stack is back in the way it, the old one was before with all the ports working.